absolutely nothing on at all. So I yeah. think they've done well to think, okay, they've adapted to it. And the reason why they've filmed it is because obviously they can't have like 50 people in the building at the same mm-hmm. time. So I think, you know, they've done it safely. This, you know, Vince McMahon, he's, he's managed to, you know what I mean? He's put the show <laughs> on. So, you know, as much as it's like, what a shame that like, we're not getting that amazing WrestleMania. You know, you wait all year for like the Rumble and you wait all mm-hmm. year for Mania. Like, it's, it's a shame that you're not getting that. But in the same token, you kind of have to prepare yourself. Okay, this is where we're at. But like, let's be open-minded about it. And I mean, like, for example, The Fiend and the Cena match. I don't know how, I mean, we don't know. Like you say, rumours go out all the time. Like, it could have just been done in the PC. But mm-hmm. if it, it's filmed somewhere else, like, that would be really interesting to see. So... I'm really curious to see how it goes, and I haven't seen any spoilers <laughs> or like yeah, well, rumors. Keep or keep so. away from them, but um, yeah, I think I think with the setup, I would I would imagine they're either going to do something really extravagant with a load of LED screens all yeah, around it, like really over thought. the top, uh, light it up, and not really show any seats. Do you know what I mean? Because that's just pointless. I think so. um, or, and I I would definitely. I'm glad now they've taken up. AEW stance because AEW when they like I know SmackDown the first one it was shot where you just see the chairs in the background but AEW the first show they did was like facing the entrance way which just was so much better because yeah. you just didn't want to keep looking the other way so you remember like the whole the old Madison Square Garden look used to be where you just mm. used to focus on the the entrance oh, yeah. I, I would definitely have the hard cam facing that way yeah. but yeah, I, I would. If you're not going to have anything extravagant go around, I would black out as much of it, even using a dark curtain, and just get the spotlights. Kind of like All Star do, really, just focused yeah. on the ring, um, and just focus on you know what you have got. And obviously, they can do some more better things with the camera guys because there's going to be no audience to get in the way of. So they could and actually also, do it's like not live, so they could yeah, have time to like. So they're going to have loads of time to things. edit this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I think I, I like the idea of the LED screens. Like Dan said it, and I thought, well, maybe for Mania they'll pull it out of the bag, like in mm-hmm. terms of making it different, because they couldn't do it every week for Raw and SmackDown. It wouldn't be special. Yeah, so maybe for I, Mania they're going to pull it out of the bag and do something like that. But in the same token, they might not do anything, you know? Like, no, because yeah, it's that's, real. That's it is thing. what it is. Like yeah. logistically, it might not work. And also, like to set up those screens, would you need to have like a lot of people in and you're not really like allowed to? So, you know, mm-hmm. it's a difficult one. So. I'm, in tr- yeah. I'm curious. I'm very yeah, curious yeah. to tell you that much. <laughs> we all are. Um, yeah, so it will be a strange... Um, I mean, we certainly won't forget this one. This one will be remembered yeah. for a long old time just on the sheer look of it. But um, obviously, I, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if they really do the extravagant entrances with nobody there, quite frankly. I don't know oh, that yeah. that will happen. You know, like Mr. Triple H always gets a very high... But then end. They're, in the, they're in the PC. Um, like, I was watching the <laughs> Orlando Mania, you know, with a huge ramp. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. that's, and, like, yeah, Sasha yeah, Banks comes down in, like, mm-hmm. a car and, like, Triple H and Stephanie had, like, motorcycles. That's right, yeah. Yeah, like, I don't think they could do that in PC because you're only going, like, a couple metres down the road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's interesting. Like I say, mm. I'll be curious to see... Uh, what the, what they do, and it's interesting that it's over two nights as well. Like, yeah, um, do you know matches. how long they are? Yeah, so there's there's four matches on Saturday, um, <laughs> and then the rest of the matches, which is about eleven, I believe, is all on Sunday. So I'm guessing that what they'll do on the Saturday is more of a like a, a they obviously have the matches, but I think they're going to have like a kind of build up on it as well instead of like yeah. a pre-show. Have it within the show itself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, I think the only matches that have been announced for each show is that it's um, is the WWE Universal title is in um, is on the Saturday, and but the, isn't that not which one's not happening? The gold. Well, I I see, I didn't want to spoil it for you because I didn't know what you knew. I know, I know that Roman can't. I know Roman can't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know Roman that can't go. Yeah, so it's basically down as um, Roman Reigns' replacement. That's on the card at the moment, but yeah, it's that match on the Saturday. And then also, and I I don't fire. know, I don't know anything. But the thing I was thinking, some of them live in Canada, and I'm not sure what the rule is with flying. Yeah, there was a there was a problem with Brock, um, but he's Edge? already done. He'd already done that. Edge, I don't think so. I think he was okay. The only reason it was Brock is because Brock, like, if there's anyone, I keep saying this, if there's anyone good at isolation, it's Brock Lesnar. He <laughs> should be the go-to guy to ask advice. Because he loves it. He doesn't have a telephone. He doesn't have internet. 
I think the nearest phone he has, he has to go outside on like a pay phone. And really? he's just, yeah, yeah. He's built like a huge compound with like crazy walls around it. And that's how he lives up there with, of course, uh, his wife, Sable. But that that's is how they why live. why Brock Lesnar is so good. Because, so he, you know, yeah. you know, the Rumble, like he, his performance in the Rumble was just like, I mean, I don't know. About you. I thought it was like the best thing ever. Like, oh, he's, he's story... one of my, I'm actually wearing a Brock t-shirt as we record. Oh, this, good. So, like, yeah, I'm a yeah, Brock he's guy. one of my favorites. I yeah. just think he's just second to none. Like his ability to tell a story, his like athleticism, you know, all that, but like his ability to tell a story. And mm-hmm. maybe that comes from the fact that like, he doesn't go on the internet. Yeah, he exactly. doesn't read, he doesn't read <laughs> criticism. He doesn't doubt himself. He just does the job he's always mm-hmm. known how to do and learned how to do from way back. So it's mm-hmm. not like today's era where everything's like, controlled by the internet it's actually interesting mm-hmm. that i didn't know that yeah you can i think there's like a documentary it's on youtube you can get it and like he allows some access to just go around i think espn go and interview him and yeah he just talks about it. he's got no he's never had internet <laughs> he's never had a telephone <laughs> and yeah he rings like paul Heyman weekly but he has to drive out of his compound to do it and paul Heyman rings at a specific time on this <laughs> payphone and that's that's how they have dialogue but you can't get hold of him unless you're going to send a letter um and yeah he just lives in he just i mean he's already said it he's, he's made no bones about it he doesn't like being around a lot of people but i think that <laughs> works well for him because the mis- the mystery about him yeah, something Zora. that people, yeah, yeah people want to like get to know more about this guy, but we can't. And the fact that he doesn't really, he's not going to be one of these guys that goes on TMZ and write a Twitter or anything. You know, he's yeah. not going to be bothered about things like that. So I think it really works. I would say Brock Lesnar is probably the most over performer in that company, just yeah. by the fact that he's not used weekly and he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't expose much about himself. So what yeah. you see is what you get with him. And like, but he's just so good at telling a story. Like, yeah. I was watching. Uh, I think I don't know. If it was WrestleMania twenty two. It was Cena and Triple H. Right. And yes, WrestleMania twenty two. Yep. And it was just like it was. It was on YouTube. I mean, I have the network, but mm-hmm. I just happened to be on on YouTube, and it come up because WWE are posting full matches here and there. And I watched it, and it's just there's something about wrestling then where it was. Just, the the story like they didn't do loads like mm-hmm. they did they did their moves don't get me wrong extremely impressive they're very athletic but it, it wasn't about that like it was just the story like the crowd mm-hmm. were just going nuts over mm-hmm. nothing like mm-hmm. literally Triple H like threw John Cena out the ring and stood there and the crowd just going crazy about it and there's something about Brock Lesnar where he has that he you know in the Rumble every guy who came in he had mini stories with each of them and then obviously like the Kofi story and the Rey Mysterio story as well like I mean that was like the main little one in there and then obviously the same with Drew McIntyre but even each guy like Elias and stuff that came in Shelton Benjamin he had these mini stories with each of them and like I just think that's such a hard thing to be able to do is just to tell a story like that the crowd went, like they were going crazy over it mm. and it's like what you know and like he's one of those guys he's kind of like maintained that whole thing like Cena's obviously got it as well he gets that reaction but like Brock he can just tell that story and like I actually think that's something Roman Reigns can do. He works that style where, like, I mean, it helps that he gets such a huge reaction all the time. But he just they just tell the story and you just think, oh, my God, that was crazy. And, like, not a lot happened in the sure. match. But, like, it didn't need to. Like, the the crowd just went for it. And, you know, like, that's that's what I really like about Brock Lesnar. I just think he, he can tell the story without doing really too much. Yeah, my listeners, they're always harping on to me about you know, Brock, who, who's he passing the torch to? Like, it's always about who's Brock going to give all the rub to. But I keep saying to people, I think when you, when you look back in history, it's going to be just the Brock, Le- uh, Brock Lesnar era. You know, there is no, you know, I know people are expecting it should have been handed to Roman. It wasn't going to be handed to Seth last year. But look where that's gone. I just think that Brock is the guy and people just maybe that there isn't a passing of the torch. And but I we don't, are just yeah, living like, I don't, Brock I don't Lesnar, I don't think he has an explanation in the sense of like, you know, I think he got Roman, like, I mean, obviously Roman's getting the reaction, but he got Roman into who Roman is now, like the Mm -hmm. star that he is. Same thing with Seth, like, you know, and he, you know, even his little program with Goldberg that made Brock Lesnar fresh again. And like, he has this ability, like, and I say this about Roman, like anyone Roman steps into the ring to, like he made Braun Strowman, like they had this feud that stemmed for ages. And like, he's one of those people where like, he doesn't really fade out like anyone you put him in with that is their opportunity to to make something of themselves you know because he got Kofi over again 
that Kofi mm-hmm. was champion, then he lost it, and now we're all rooting for Kofi again. Like he's this underdog, and we're all rooting for him again. And like he has this ability to really make people fresh and stand out. So I, I agree with you in the sense of like almost a Brock Lesnar error, but he is making stars, and he's one yeah. of like, the two people who have that ability. Like I said about the storytelling, like. Mm-hmm it doesn't really matter who you put them in with. They mm-hmm. have this chance and like they can make something of themselves, you know? Because I, I I mean, I would quite like Brock's last match to be with Roman just because I think, right. I think Roman was kind of born into who he is now when he had his match with Brock. Mm-hmm. So I think it might make sense to go out like that. But obviously, you yeah. know. He's had, knows, some, he's had some huge rivalries, Brock Lesnar, like with Undertaker. Oh my um, God, yeah. And in the streak, obviously. And then a couple of matches after that that they had. And the John Cena matches yeah. have been pretty intense. But, you know, he does those kind of matches and he'll work like with Big Show. He's had like a, back when he first started, the, those Big Show matches were excellent. Um, one of the first times I really started to identify with somebody like the Big Show just because Brock could really manhandle him a bit. Um, yeah. I don't think he'd had anybody like that up until he'd met Brock. Um, but the fact that then you get Brock in a match like with Daniel Bryan or AJ Styles and like he knocks it out of the park with those guys yep. and you think like you forget the Daniel you know, Bryan one was great yeah it's just... like, I remember watching that and like there was a point where you know I, I like Daniel Bryan but at, at mm-hmm. the time I don't remember being like super super fanatic of him but like right. you know I liked him but I remember watching it and I, like I was the biggest Daniel Bryan fan in the world like mm-hmm. you know and I, like, I don't know what happened I just the match was so good and there was a point where I thought, oh my God, like Daniel Bryan's actually going to do it. Like he's going to beat him and then yeah. he obviously didn't work out like that. But, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. That's what I mean. He has these, like, he's one of those people, like whoever he wrestles, like it's great. Like it, it's really enjoyable. And, you know, sometimes people complain because like the matches can be short and stuff. But like you say, it's part of the aura. Like, he, you know, mm-hmm. you can't come out and do 20 minute matches every time he shows up. No, you, it, you know, really... you lose I, I the I wish... mystique. Yeah, I wish they did that with more WWE talent, really, because I think they'd all be over a lot more um, if they didn't use them, if they didn't have to have so much TV. I think, like, less is more and, uh, mm. you know, other stuff. But um, let, let's get, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you for an early prediction. Drew McIntyre, does he win his first championship after winning the Rumble? Or do you think because of, given the circumstances that we're in, they might hold off? a little bit longer for that to happen and have it in front of a crowd. I, I don't know, but, or do you think they're going to want to have a feel good moment? And uh, this is, this is it for Drew. Cause like he's, he's really come on leaps and bounds. You know, we remember mm. this oh guy, three, three man band. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'll say. And then, you know, went away, obviously, um, uh, Jinder Mahal, you know, he came back and won the title. So anything is possible, but do you think this is, this is, the, um, they're going to do it at WrestleMania, especially given what's happened. I, I honestly don't know. And I like the fact that I don't know. Yeah. I hate it when I feel like, oh, I know what's going to happen. Like, I hate, because mm-hmm. I hate being that person. Mm-hmm. Um, I literally have no idea. Because um, I don't know, even if it, in, it was in front of a crowd, I don't know that Drew McIntyre was surefire to win. Like, mm-hmm. I really didn't, I didn't know what way it was going to go. Um, I don't know. I mean, I would quite like for Drew McIntyre to not win and mm-hmm. maybe have his moment in front of a crowd. Yeah. Um, but in the same token, with what you're saying, like we might need that feel good moment. So it's it's hard to know really. But I think Brock might retain, and then I think it might happen later on. I mean, yeah. but it's hard because we don't we don't really know when life's going. No, to no. I think I so think you can't probably... you can't say oh well we'll give it to him at SummerSlam because yeah. it's still, because it's still be here. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's a risky move if they they hold on to that long, isn't it? Um. So yeah, I do think Brock retains. That was even before this. Because I got a feeling, I do think Drew will eventually get that title. But I think, like most times, it's better to chase than the catch. And I think yeah. they're going to want him to chase a little bit, a little bit longer. Give us more um, time to get to know Drew as well. And, yeah, I think that you know, he's got gonna... so much behind him, and like. But I know, do think I... he he can still get the rub from this match. I still think it'll yeah. be close. I don't think it'll be like they're not going to just have Brock go over like anybody. I think they'll they'll um. Yeah, like the, the rub, like you know, what they like, did with Daniel Bryan as well. Yeah, was yeah, like quite, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just got a feeling as well that I mean, I don't know now, but there were well, certainly it won't be happening now, that's for sure. But there were rumblings before all this that they were still trying to get Tyson Fury involved, and he's been he keeps poaching at Brock, and that that's a match they'd like to do. Oh, so really? I kind of yeah, and and being uh-huh. that he's got 
that title in boxing and Brock would be the, the WWE, it would only make perfect sense for Vince to want to have 